Oh, look at that PlayStation. What I would do to you. Mm. I've been playing PlayStation since PS1. <laughs> Never had an Xbox. <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> Xbox shoebox. <laughs> not that I hate Xbox, I'm not like. It's great. We have both consoles. Although PlayStation have the very exclusive. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, we got Game Pass. Yeah, and we got a couple of different consoles. You made your point. That Xbox is great. Okay then. Xbox has Jesus some great Christ. exclusives. Are you struggling to know what games to play on your PS5? Well, I've got you. So I'm going to let you guys know the best exclusives to buy. So let's take a look at these top 16 PlayStation exclusives. Not 15, 16. Number 16. When I mention Astro's Playroom, it is a must play on the PlayStation 5 when you first get your console. It was literally the first game I played on the PlayStation 5 and it comes with the console. This game showcases what the DualShock can do and wow. It is incredible. Okay, not that exciting, but <laughs> it's on par. You will travel through these amazing worlds collecting artifacts and collectibles that will then go into your showroom and show you the history of PlayStation. The loading screens are non-existent and I would even pay to play this game. Number 15. This game is a timed exclusive. As of this video, it's still just on PlayStation. Meh. A game where you are stuck in a time loop for a hell of a long time. Your job is to level up, find clues, explore different areas at different points of the day in order to kill these eight targets all in one day. If you can't, then the day restarts. I did get bored of the game quite quickly because instead of a time loop, it felt like I was just redoing these missions at different points of the day. The graphics and art style is amazing. The gameplay is smooth at 60 FPS. The guns you get are incredible and the combat and shooting is so much fun. You could probably get this game on discount now. Maybe I'll give it another shot. Number 14. Sackboy A Big Adventure was a day one title for the PS5 and it is similar to Astro's Playroom and Super Mario 3D World. The level design is absolutely insane with so many variety of levels, puzzles and environments. It can be quite difficult and frustrating. You will grab point bubbles, beat up some enemies and hunt for collectibles. A generic storyline but it doesn't really matter. A mythical being takes Sackboy's friends and forces them to build his topsy turva whatever that is. You can play this game as a straight single player game or co-op mode with three other friends, which I could imagine is a hell of a lot of fun if I had any friends. You got me! True, I've got you. Although, I'm in your head and this is all made up. Number 13. Now Ghostwire Tokyo was a game that didn't really appeal to me with its mythical, magical sort of vibe. This is a game you might want to try out. It takes place in Tokyo and there is a supernatural energy that takes over the city. You have two protagonists, Akito, who has managed to survive this event and is trying to find his sister who is in a nearby hospital and is trying to find out what the fuck is going on. <laughs> The cool thing about this game is that you get supernatural powers in this open world map. You have to unlock areas similar to Assassin's Creed and there are three elemental powers you will get that you can then upgrade. Wind, water and fire. But you will need ether for each element in order to use in battle so you have to keep your supply up by uncovering crystallized ether in the environment. These could appear in many forms, cars, streets, signs and vases. Number 12. Gran Turismo 7, or should I say Gran Transaction 7? Yeah, that's, that's a terrible joke. Gran Turismo 7 is one of the best driving simulator games in history. I'm joking! And it's been with PlayStation since the very start. Although there's been massive controversial actions by Polyphony Studio and Sony, adding microtransactions until after the reviews came out. And also they want to make the experience as real to life as possible. In other words, make the car so fucking expensive in the game that you can't actually afford them in the game. So it forces you to buy it in world currency. You want to escape fucking reality and drive these cars? I can't drive them in real life and I can't drive them in the fucking game. Good move, Polyphony Studio. Good move. Apart from that, 
It is an amazing driving simulating game. And if you're a driving fanatic, you will love the gameplay of this game. So that is why it's got to be on this list. Just don't buy the in-world currency. Just, just don't do it. Wait for the game to be a bit cheaper because you're not paying for a full price game. You're paying for half a baked game that would cause you to then get into more debt and buy more cars and currency. Number 11. Uncharted is one of the best franchises on PlayStation and the most amazing music soundtracks you will ever hear. I hope this doesn't get copyrighted. As well as the older games, the legacy of these is two games. The Lost Legacy as you play as Chloe. Ooh yeah. And A Thief's End which has been enhanced for the PS5 which is absolutely amazing. The graphics, the 60 FPS frame rate just takes it to next generation. And if you have never played them, make sure you play the Nathan Drake collection first. They still hold up so well. And if you have any of those two games, all you need to do is pay $10 or £10 and you will get the PS5 upgrade. Just use your card and, and buy it. <laughs> your checking balance is zero fucking pounds. Fuck. Number 10. Another timed exclusive as of this video is still just a PlayStation game. Obviously, don't get offended, Xbox fans, but don't worry. <laughs> you still have plenty of games. Oh, wait, that's been delayed. Kena Bridge of Spirits is such a beautiful third-person adventure game. I really love this game. The music, the graphics, the action, the combat. And I really do hope they make a sequel to this game. You have to uncover the linear semi-open world map. You defeat a variety of enemies whilst leveling up and upgrading your abilities. You get moves like the hammer, which reminds me of Thor and other cool moves. The story is satisfying and I really hope in the next they dive into Kina's character. But hopefully it's not the last we've seen of Kina. You will lose yourself in this amazing story. Number nine, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is one of the most visually stunning games you will play on the PS5. It's vibrant colors, it's different worlds that you go into with literally no loading times as you've opened up the world to different dimensions. Maybe there's a world where this game's actually on the Xbox. The gameplay and the use of the DualShock is absolutely insane. Every weapon feels different in your hand and even when you're gliding with these roller skates, it is so satisfying when you do glide. Man, you have to play this game. Number eight. If you are a PS Plus subscriber, you will get this on the subscription service. Game Pass what? <laughs> Returnal is a surprisingly hard third person roguelike shooter where you are stuck in a death loop and have to uncover the mystery planet you have crash landed on. You uncover different areas, months monsters, aliens, and each time you die, the world will change, so enemies will be different. It keeps you on your toes and everything is unpredictable. There's a lot of good things said about this game. It's fun, and now they have updated it that you can save it at any point, which is great because that was an absolute nightmare before. Number seven. I've talked about Demon Souls numerous times on this channel, and I love the game. A game that will have you pulling your freaking hair out. Hence why I've got no hair, and I had to have a hair trap. Yeah, I know. It is one of the hardest games I have played and you need patience and concentration when playing this game. When you fight these enemies and bosses, you will die and die again and die again. And when you do die, you will think, man, I don't think I can do this. But as you play and you keep going, you keep finding ways and how to beat your enemy, you will then get better. And that's where it becomes so satisfying because when you do beat those bosses, you're like, oh my God. That took me 25 fucking times, but I did it. Man, I'm proud of myself. The graphics, whoo, <laughs> PlayStation. <laughs> Number six, a game that if you told me I would be an Amazon delivery driver delivering cargo to a post-apocalyptic America, I would be like, I don't wanna play that game. I'm currently playing Death Stranded Director's Cut and I absolutely love the game. I am addicted to this game. You're in a post-apocalyptic America and you have to rebuild cities, connect them again, deliver cargo. It's weird. It's very, very slow to start off with. If you can give this game a chance like I did, the story is really freaking interesting. You will get weapons, you will get cars. Just give this game a chance. I'm absolutely loving the game so far. If you've played it, let me know what you think in the comments below. You will upgrade your gear, you will upgrade roads so it becomes easier to transverse. Kojima, well done, my friend.
well done. And the fact that it's on the PS Plus subscription service is that you could try this game without trying to buy it. Number five. As a kid watching the cartoon Spider-Man, the animated series, I thought, you know what, this is the closest I will feel to being Spider-Man. And then I remember Spider-Man on the PS2 and wow. Wow, wow, wow. I absolutely loved that game. If I was to play that game now, I'd be like, My God, what are these webs attached to? Hello? Wow. Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales on the PS5 is truly incredible. This will be the closest you will feel to being Spider-Man. Well, you know, I actually went to cinema in my Spider-Man outfit once and <laughs> that's probably the closest I felt to being Spider-Man. You can download Spider-Man and I believe Spider-Man Miles Morales on the PS Plus subscription service. In the second game, Miles Morales, you get different abilities. You get his invisible ability, his Venom ability. The fact that they're bringing out the third one and they're also bringing out a Wolverine game. I have a theory that they're going to be in the same universe and if they are, oh my god. We can tell Avengers to... <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Number four, Horizon Zero Dawn and Forbidden West are exclusive to PlayStation. I think the first one's coming out on PC, but <laughs> it's not Xbox. It is a massive open world third person adventure game. The world has been taken over by machines. The storyline is incredible. Forbidden West is so much better than Zero Dawn, but you have to play the first one before you play Forbidden West so you know what's going on. It is so much more polished than the first one. They've also made some really cool updates like a new game plus where you get legendary equipment and weapons can get a bit boring sometimes if you don't want to do all the question marks just don't do them number three stray has literally just dropped on the playstation plus subscription service oh yeah and whoever thought about a post-apocalyptic cyberpunk world and you're playing as a cat this game is just so much fun it's different who would have thought like just being a cat trying to navigate and find your family after you lose them and you're injured you travel around this cyberpunk dystopian world you get upgrades you can do defeat enemies. It's a really cool concept. This is a game you want to try out. It's not coming out, I believe, till September, but if you're subscribed, then you can download the game. It's a timed exclusive, so it'll probably come out on Xbox in six months, a year two years. Number two, top two and you're thinking Love Gaming Neutro, are you seriously going to put Ghost of Tsushima in here again? We've seen it so many times. But number two is Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima is a 10 out of 10 game you feel like a samurai in this game and this is probably the best game on the ps5 especially with the director's cut where you get the dlc as well iki island expansion story is so deep you feel like you're in a japanese movie you can also put it in black and white but i wanted to have it in color because the colors the sounds everything is truly amazing about this game you will not regret playing this game feels like the old assassin's creed games as soon as i played it, i was like wow I'm getting Assassin's Creed Enzio vibes. They're also probably going to make a sequel. You should check out that video. I will get back into this game. This has got to be on your list. This is on the PS Plus subscription service, so uh, <laughs> you know what to do. Number one, God of War Ragnarok is coming out November 9th. I tried to buy the collector's edition and within fucking minutes it got sold out. These fucking scalpers on eBay. But God of War is a must play and it's free on the PS Plus. The 60 FPS update is just simply amazing. This has given me a reason to go back to this game before Ragnarok comes out and yes it is a exclusive to PlayStation. I believe it's out on PC or coming to PC. The hype for the sequel is unreal so you need to play this game again on PS5. Don't worry Xbox fans that you can't play this. <laughs> <laughs> So if you have your brand spanking new PS5, hopefully this video will tell you what games you should try out. Let me know if I've missed out any other games. Love to hear what you guys think. Let's take a look at the comment of the day from my previous video. Does Stray live up to the hype? Shout out to Lee. Great video. Would love to see you create videos like this for more future games. Thanks for the comment, my man. And yeah, if you see my previous video, it's a little bit different. I'm trying to do a few different things with my video. So you need to let me know what you like and dislike and I will push towards that make sure you try straight out because it's only on playstation both consoles are just as good 